Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of AP Chinese and in this week's video we are going to talk about one of my favorite topics which is food! Now my original idea for this video was actually to make like a top 10 like actually most popular Chinese foods but then I thought you know what if I do that I'd actually have to do a lot of research to make sure I had my facts straight and even after that people would probably still disagree and get mad if I didn't include their favorite food. So you know what I made a list of my favorite foods all 12 of them and today I'm going to share that list with you guys. So let's get started. All right so this list is not in any particular order. But let's begin with the specialty straight from the capital city, and that is Peking duck. In Chinese, this dish is called Beijing Kao Ya. Beijing is obviously Beijing. Kao means to bake or roast, and Ya is duck. And there's several reasons why this dish is so special and why I love it so much. The first is that duck, in my opinion, is better than chicken. It's gamier, it's got a better texture, it's got more flavor. And the second thing is there's so much thought and attention to detail that goes into this dish and making it the perfect and best tasting duck that you'll ever have. From the way that the duck is raised to this careful and detail they put into flash boiling the skin, I know they pump air underneath the skin, glaze it, air dry it, and all of this process is to make that skin extra crispy. Now if you want to learn about the details of how they make this, I'll link a good video down below so you can watch it. When they serve the dish, they bring it out whole to your table and someone will actually come and cut it for you. They'll cut in these nice thin slices, making sure you have a nice bite of meat to a nice bite of skin and not, you know, an uneven proportion of either one. And the way you eat it is you put it in these like little tortillas, these little flour tortillas things. I don't know how to describe it, but here's a, here's a picture. And you put it on the tortillas with some hoisin sauce, which is hai xian jiang. And then you put scallions in there and also cucumbers if you want. You wrap it all up and it's just this nice nugget of glorious goodiness. And it's so delicious. I've actually only had it once in my life uh, in Beijing, which was a fantastic experience. And the other important thing about this dish is that it's not something that you'll just eat for lunch. This is a dish for an occasion. It's like the turkey at Thanksgiving for, you know, my American friends and those people who celebrate it. You don't eat it very often, but when you do, it's something you do with a lot of people to celebrate something or you just want to go out and eat something great. The next item is a lot simpler, but it really needs no introduction. It is a humble dumpling. In Chinese, the name for dumpling is jiaozi. And there's two main ways to cook it, of course. You can either boil it or you can fry it. So there's slight variances in the name depending on the way you cook it. Shui jiao, or water dumpling refers to a dumpling that is boiled, whereas guo tian, or pot stick, pot sticker, refers to a dumpling that is fried. And I love this dish because it's so humble, it's very simple. Growing up, my family made it a lot, we used to eat it a lot at home, so it's like a comfort food, it brings back a lot of memories. And even though it's really simple, you could take it a lot of ways with the filling, and it still tastes delicious. Our next food item is the cousin to the dumpling, and that is baozi. So I'm saying the Chinese word first because in English, some people call it buns or like steamed buns, but other people just straight up call it baozi. I don't think there's really like a good, you know, English word that everyone uses. The concept is very similar. It's a dough with a filling inside, except in this case, it's a leaven dough. So, you know, there's yeast and you can think of it as like a Chinese bread with filling inside, but it's not baked, it's steamed. And the filling can be either sweet or savory. Most of them are savory, but there are a few sweet and even dessert baozi also do exist. One of my favorite varieties is cha shao bao, and this is a baozi that's filled with a sweet pork filling. If you get a chance to try it, I'd highly recommend. So now let's move away from the simple dishes and back to the labor intensive ones. Our next dish is braised pork belly. In Chinese, this is hong shao zhou. It's something like red burnt meat. Okay, that doesn't sound appetizing, but it actually is really good and I've loved this dish since I was very young. You start with the pork belly meat, which has a nice layer of meat, like lean meat, a nice layer of fat, and the skin is still attached to it. So you're already starting out with a variety of textures and the whole cooking process is actually really complicated. During the whole process, it gets boiled, it gets steamed, it gets fried, 
and there's a variety of flavors and sauces that go into it. And when it comes out, you get this really rich, pretty salty, but delicious and dark is the word I will use to describe this dish. Very dark tasting meat. And like I said, the process is really long. This is not something you can make at home. It's probably as complicated, if not more complicated, than uh, the Peking duck we talked about. So if you get a chance to go to a restaurant, I definitely suggest you take that opportunity to try it if they have it available. And again, if you want to learn more about the process, I'll link a good video down below because it really is quite fascinating. All right, we're at number five, and this one is a classic. And it is fried rice. In Chinese, the word is chao fan. Chao means to stir fry, and fan technically means food. But in Chinese, when we talk about fan, we're usually talking about rice. Now, this one's obviously a classic. You'll find it at Chinese restaurants a lot. But where I live here in the U.S., actually, I don't like a lot of the restaurant fried rice because I think they add a lot of vegetables that are pre-cut or even frozen because you always get, like, the diced carrots, the the corn, and the peas, you know, the kind of vegetables that would be included in like a bag of frozen vegetables, you know? And it tastes that way too. It tastes like bland and just kind of not flavorful. I made this a lot when I was in college and I like to keep things simple. The staples I always add are definitely onions, spring onions or like leeks, just all kinds of scallions because I love scallions. And if I were to add a protein, uh, which I didn't for this one because I kept that one super simple, uh, I would add eggs because I think it sticks a little bit to the rice and you can get like a nice bite every time. Whereas if you put other proteins like say shrimp, you're either getting a, a bite of rice or you're getting a bite of shrimp, not both. You know what I mean? So if you guys like to cook, definitely try to make this at home. See what you can do with it and find the flavor you like. Our next dish is basically the same thing except you swap out rice for noodles. And in Chinese, in Mandarin Chinese, it's chao mian, which is fried, stir-fried, and mian comes from mian tiao, referring to noodles. Um, the word you'll see here, like chao mein, I think, that's Cantonese, so I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly or not. But of course, the dish is very popular, not just uh, within Chinese communities, but also in Japanese, Korean, and a lot of the other East Asian countries, they all have their own varieties of basically the same thing. They are all delicious. I love them all. There's so many ways you can take it, and I would eat it very often, every day of my life, maybe even, if I had to. Number seven on the list, we've got a lesser known dish, and it's actually a soup. A treasure soup, or a treasure kanji. In Chinese, it's ba bao zhou. Translates pretty directly. Ba is eight, bao is treasure, and zhou is kanji. So this soup is actually quite simple to make. As the name implies, there's eight ingredients, uh, all sorts of grains and barleys that go into it. Basically, you just boil it all in a pot with sugar until it becomes thick. So it's a sweet soup um, and you're good to go. But when I was younger, I actually had a weird obsession with canned soup. Um, I really love Progresso. And you could also get Babo Joe in cans like this. And I used to love getting those at the supermarket because they also included like a plastic spoon in the cap. So you could pop open the cap, take out the spoon, open the can and eat it right out of the can. And it's delicious cold too, by the way. It's almost like a dessert. So this dish has a nostalgic factor for me too. Um, when I went back to China last time, I actually brought some cans of Bao Zhou on my luggage <laughs> to bring back to the U.S. Next, we've got a true dessert, and that is nian gao. It means year cake, and it's eaten around Chinese New Year, but if you like it, you can eat it whenever you want. It's made with sticky rice flour or uh, glutinous rice flour, and it's sweet, of course. You can flavor it a great many ways. Red bean is always a popular option, and it's steamed, not baked, so it's very smooth around the edges. The texture is sticky, as you might imagine, but it's also very dense and very satisfying to eat. I know in Japanese and Korean cuisine, they all have their own varieties of some sort of sticky rice cake, and they're all really delicious, honestly. It'll definitely be a different experience if you're used to eating like fluffy cakes. Our next food item looks like a present that somebody wrapped and is gifting to you. And I'm talking about zongzi. This is another item that doesn't really have a good English name. So we are just going to call it by its Chinese name. It primarily consists of sticky rice. I love sticky rice. 
not like sticky rice flour, so this is actually um, just like the rice grains themselves, and it can be sweet or savory. On the sweet side of things, red bean is really popular. That holds true here. On the savory side of things, it's generally filled with like uh, pork, mushroom, peanuts. Those are really popular. Everything is rolled up in bamboo leaves, wrapped up in twine, and then boiled. So when you eat it, you literally, it's like opening a present. You untie the twine, unroll the leaves, and then the goodness is inside. It's a great tasting food and almost like a whole experience just eating it. We're at number 10, and this one is by far the weirdest one on this list. It is chicken feet. Ji zhuazi. Ji is chicken, and zhuazi is, it's actually claw, so like chicken claw. This one's also nostalgic for me. I love this when I was younger. I eat it less now. I think there's something satisfying about chewing off of a bone. It's like how uh, drumsticks or like chicken wings are really satisfying to eat. It's like that, but you know, with chicken feet. The difference is on chicken feet, there's not really any meat on there. If you like tendons, you'll like chicken feet because there's a lot of tendons. There's a lot of skin, of course. It's served either hot or cold and either with like a dark sauce or it can be like lightly seasoned as well. I generally prefer the dark sauce, like black bean sauce, I really like, and I like it warm. Definitely not a food item for everyone. A lot of people will be squeamish just looking at it, but if you dare try it, it's a good chance to experience something a little different. And on the plus side, I've actually read somewhere that it's a good source of uh, boosting your collagen. Before we get to the 11th item, have any of you read my YouTube bio? It says, made by a noodle-loving Chinese-American. So I love my noodles, and today I'm going to share with you my favorite Chinese noodle dish. It is jiajiang mian. Jiajiang mian is all about that sauce. Jiajiang actually means fried sauce, and that refers to how it's made. The sauce is a soybean-based sauce. It's fermented, and it's really salty, it's really rich, it's really dark, it's got a lot of unami, brought out by the fermentation process. Oh my gosh, you guys are gonna know my entire flavor profile by the end of this video. Obviously, I really like my dark fermented bean sauces. I really like my sticky rice. Yeah, but the actual noodles in this dish don't even matter that much. You can put vegetables or meats in it. That doesn't matter that much either. Anything basically with this sauce can be called mian. It's really popular in Korea too, actually. And this was actually from a Korean restaurant I went to recently. In Korea, they call it Ta jiang mian, which is, you know, a long word from Chinese, judging by the sound. The Korean version is slightly different. I think they use a different bean when making the sauce. But other than that, it tastes more or less the same thing. So now let's wrap up this list with another dessert. This one is feng li su. Feng li is a word for pineapple, and su means like flaky or crispy. So it's like a pastry. This dessert is a pastry, and the outside is flaky and crispy, and uh, the inside is cooked pineapple, almost like a jam sort of flavor, but the fibers are still there, so it's a nice contrast in texture as well. It's fibrous and almost chewy on the inside, and the outside is flaky and crispy. It's a Taiwanese dessert, and I actually had not tried this until like three years ago, but when I did, I really loved it. It's a popular gift item, so if you get a chance to try it, or if you're going to Taiwan, this is definitely something that you should put on your bucket list. And that is a wrap for today's video. I hope you guys liked it. Let me know if you've tried any of these dishes before, or if there's another Chinese dish that you really like, leave it in the comment section down below. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe for new videos every Thursday. See you guys next time. Bye-bye. Thank you.